Hey guys, Darcy here. I'm here with with Lang today, and we're we're back on Ten Minute Fitness. How have you How been, you, mate? Lang? <laughs> Ask the same question. Um, been going well. So, training frequency is maintaining training every day. I haven't trained today, but um, just do it, been doing something every day, keeping up with the rings, the kettlebells, the sprints, and weight training when I can. How about you? Yeah, I've been I've been training heaps. I've been training every day for footy. We've got a bit of a, a challenge at the minute over the last week. So I've I've picked up the pace a little bit, but I've just got to be mindful I don't go overboard at the minute. <laughs> Have you been up to much else apart from, from training at the minute? Um yeah, just doing a lot of uh you know, reading myself, um, education. I mean, knowledge is power, right? So <laughs> what a better time to do it when you've got more free time um, what have you been reading and and um yeah looking into uh definitely stuff about your immunity how your immune system works definitely during these times so mm. uh, I, I find that if you empower yourself with knowledge you're gonna be better equipped and um less fearful for what's out there and prepare I, yourself I, I've been doing yeah. a bit of reading. I've, I've got a new book, um, The Mindfulness Project. I've only read one chapter, but it started off okay. And I've been listening to a few podcasts and really just making sure that I'm, I'm trying a few different things. But I reckon the best thing I've watched this week, um, do you see the latest Michael Jordan documentary on, on Monday? Oh, love it. I, I watched um, three episodes last night uh, about um, what's it called? Uh, Phil, Phil and uh, Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman. Episodes. He's pretty full on, isn't he? <laughs> Outrageous. I, I like him. Yeah. He's, um, he's yeah. got a good on-court attitude. I suppose that, that's probably the best way to put it, isn't it? Just full. I love the bit where... He does. <laughs> I love the bit where they set him free for 48 hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd, that'd be a lot, a lot of trust, but there's no way... Yeah. That, there would be anyone who'd get away with that these days. <laughs> <laughs> what was the podcast you listened to? Um, what you find interesting there? Um, PJF Performance. They had um, Max Marzo and Bernard Griffiths on it. And um, they're both... It was really good. They were talking about warm-ups and really yep. whether we do really need them. Because to be honest, personally, I don't know about you, but I don't really like go through a structured warm-up. I'll just sort of... A couple of light sets, get straight into it. Um, but it's it was really good, nice, um, a different sp- perspective to look at it. But um, looking at other things that you can use, so getting into some weighted mobility drills, and and really not having a determined spot where the warm up ends and the workout starts. So it's all about creating mm. intent and focus from the get go. Well, um, I think it's really. Uh good topic because I, I kind of have a similar um, perception about warm-up and remember the times when the rollers first came out and everyone's like foam rolling for a million years before they start? Yeah. I'm like, hang on. This can't be right. I mean, yeah, it feels better, but you know what also feels good? Being efficient and getting out of there and doing the right things and rolling around for 10 hours didn't seem right for me and nor did stretching for an absurd amount of time I think, um i think that's that's good we what we're going to do with these podcasts is we're going to take them in a bit of a direction and it's really what we are looking for is to help people and help ourselves really open our eyes a bit and just look look a bit deeper into things and, and trying things yourself so we're going to have a bit of a look into stretching and mobility and really share what we we think about it all what are, what are your thoughts like yeah yeah definitely so i reckon and this is my stance on it there's always a reason for why this material is out there and if you've not looked into it or at the slightest you can't be absolute about your opinion so definitely try it for yourself look into it and maybe even dabble in, in a little bit of it like uh can't dismiss it when you haven't tried it at all right so um yeah uh stretching flexibility mobility drills uh are they necessary i think you just got to pick a couple one or two and then as you said just get into it if even that yeah i'm a, I'm a man of threes 
Like I always work in, in threes, I find it to be quite efficient. But I, I think a lot of the time, there's something that I've been looking into. And what, what I've been looking into is like a isometric circuit to start. Mm-hmm. It's like a warm up. And I think the reason that this would be really good is because we're getting a lot of like tendon pain, joint stiffness. Like, do you ever get, you go mm-hmm. and you squat your hips and your, your knees just feel stiff? Of course. Yeah, and of course. If you can say spend this this circuit I've been looking at takes six minutes, six minutes, four exercises, three sets of each, and you just rotate through each one. And by the time you're you're done that, you've got warm, warm tissues, you're, you're feeling ready to go, and like your, your knees, and your hips are going to feel so much better, and ankles and that as well. So it's something really good for tendon health. And if it was something like it's just really finding that way to to work it in. Oh, all right. How about this? How about you tell me two of those items and I'll do it right now. So I'll, I'll perform a bodyweight squat. Yeah. And yeah. I'll tell you how it feels. Do, do three bodyweight squats to start off with. Uh, make sure I have room. There we go. Oh, Looking nice yeah, and deep through there. And, yeah, and I'll explain a bit of the mechanics through it while, while we go. So the, the two exercises, which I reckon will be the ones which are going to make a big difference for you. The first one will be wall sits. So if you're getting discomfort through the front of the knee, wall sits, 90 degrees. We're to free it up. So you want 90 degrees through the knees and we want to hold there for 20 yeah. seconds. So 20 seconds. Wall sit. <laughs> studies and the, the people to look out for this are Jill Cook and Ebony Rio, but studies have shown for, for pain and for freedom through the joint. What we want to look at is they suggest five sets of 45 seconds, but I have found practically three sets of 20 seconds is like a minimum effective dose. So uh, I've what done you want to do, next. you've done, done your wall sits, the second one. So that's our knee one. We want to do some hip based ones as well. So to be sitting down, hugging around your knees. So you want to hug around the, the bottom of your knees, feet on the ground and grab onto your forearm and you want to squeeze your knees into your elbows. So squeeze quite right. hard. Sitting on a chair, squeezing those knees out. So there we go. Grabbing around them. Yep, pushing your knees out, and the same sort of thing. So if we get 20 seconds of this. Yeah. Three I'll do seconds. one more wall thing. Yeah, we'll do one, one more of each. But with this, you want to test first. So you do your exercise that you're going to do. The ones which I'd suggest looking at for this squats and like touching your toes you'll find that you should be able to get a reasonable diff- difference through this and it's different from person to person like there's a few different isometrics but if you start with that and then you just think about how it feels you do your three sets of each and then we come back to your squats afterwards ideally what you should be feeling is your, your legs are going to feel a lot looser and then your knees are going to feel not so tight is what we're looking for for that. So the main thing with this is we're getting good isometric contraction. So wall sits, you're really pushing your heels into the ground and you feel those quads fire up. And the knee hugs, you want to really lean forward, pushing your knees into your arms and you should really feel it through the back of your hips. How are they feeling, feel, those wall sits? Isn't this um, very like different to what we've been told for a while. Like you used to be like, all right, run around the oval for two laps and get ready. <laughs> a couple of static stretches and that after. And I think like static stretching has its place. It's just the, the dosage you get from a lot of people is really long. Like if you want to look at isometrics or like loaded mobility or even active stretching, which, which has its place in there as well, you can get through this a lot quicker what we're after, warmer muscle, muscle tissue, and we, we want to just feel really good going into our exercise as well. Yeah. You we get a bit of a sweat up doing this as well. <laughs> All yeah. right, I've done my two sets of 20 seconds. I'm just going to retest my squat. Okay, I can feel my muscles burning. I do feel a bit looser. There we go. I can say okay. there is definitely an improvement. And that's the, the, what we're doing rather than loading just the muscle, we're loading the tendons through the isometric. And that, that's the difference of having that in there as well. So it's a nice thing to do whether you're squatting, running is another thing, yeah. 
which you'll find, which if you get sore knees while you're running, just stop, find a park bench or find a wall you can go up against. Make sure it's clean in these times as well. <laughs> and then, then sit up against the wall, do those wall sits and you'll feel a ton better. Well, I can tell that that contraction is already, you know, picking up my heart rate, um, warming up the joints and tendons around there. And it's a lot different to stretching where you're just sitting there passively, almost aimlessly as well sometimes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that definitely has an effect on me and the squat did feel smoother in comparison to. What, what do you do pre-exercise? Pre, um, well, depending on what I'm doing, just say I'm going to be doing a squat. I would just start off with actual squats, yeah. just lightly. And in my opinion, um, if that's a loaded stretch already. So your body weight. Then you put some weight on it. It's loading and stretching out all the tendons and muscles already. And then when you work up to your top set, you should be warm. But there are probably other ways to get around that as well, like we just did with the isometric hold. And that's there's there's a few things which are going to work work with this as well. But loading the tissue, that's when you're going to get the long term response. The, mm. the static stretching can feel quite good. Um, depends if you're usually a tight person or someone who really likes to stretch find people who are quite hypermobile really like to stretch and that as well it can feel quite good but we're looking for longer term responses and more effective use of our time that's probably the the best way to put it yeah i think you hit the nail on its head um basically the most effective way to get through your workout and it's hard to get started sometimes especially going into winter now um <laughs> but yeah i think a lot of people associate stretching with getting more flexible and more mobile what they don't see in the athletes is they do a lot of uh, loaded movements with weights and that's what gives it the long-term effect like uh, for example if you're in the office and you've got office posture which is like this because you're typing like that all the time you're going to be in that posture for when you walk you got to start owning the postures so if you want to change your posture you got to do what you want to change right you got to sit back or you got to keep moving you got to own that position you can't you can't just expect stretching for even 30 minutes to counteract a whole eight hours of sitting down right yeah and i think that's probably the the place for static stretching is is purely just how you feel afterwards and why you're doing it. If you, you like that stretch feel and you want to commit however long to doing some static stretches, that's probably like, do you see any other benefits to static stretching? I think, I think um, relaxation like can really calm you down. Oh, and it's actually, yeah. The, the other thing, early injury, early on in injuries and that as well, um, when you're looking to not really stress the, the tissue that much and you're really lacking range of motion, either like some really gentle active range or, or static is a, a good way to go with that. But that's, that's probably what the only two, two, three times you'd, you'd use it with. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not saying any, any uh, stretching is bad. It's just, uh, there's probably better ways to get you, get you where you want. What's um, your, I'm put on you on the spot a little bit here. If you had to pick, say, two, two of your top loaded mobility exercises, do you do a bit of loaded mobility or is it more just like getting straight into the... Because doing oh, I would say I do a couple of loaded mobility exercises. So, for example, if I want my hips open, I'm going to place, say, a barbell back squat. I'm going to place the bar on my back and I'm just going to sit at the bottom of the squat and hold it there. Even if it's uh, not all the way down, as you said, that was a isometric hold at the bottom. And that usually gets me quite, quite warmed up in that bottom position. And um, for, for upper body, I like to either hang, which is kind of like static stretching, but also with a barbell, I'll hold it over my head for yeah, about 20 seconds, just move around. But all those muscles are loaded with a bar. And that usually gets me going. Like, yeah, you got a lot of other alternatives, but that's the way I go with um, 
overhead and uh, lower body. You've um, you've always been well since I've known you. You've always been a very f- fluid. Would probably be the best way to describe it. You've always been very mobile. Were you ever immobile, or, or what you would consider immobile. or like stiff? Really, like did you ever struggle to touch your toes, or, or this is just how you've always been? <laughs> <laughs> That speaks for itself. Um, I would say, I think the way I was brought up, always pretty active, moving around. Um, but yeah, flexible people do feel stiff, even though they appear flexible. It's the way the movement is. It's a sort of, it's only when you do a certain um, action or um, warm up that you really feel free and ready. Even though it might look like a sit into a squat, well, um, it doesn't mean it feels good. So I think uh, we're going for a feeling, as we said. So um, what's a difficult position for all of us? I think that would be like a back bend or something, right? <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> one of those things where you go all like uh-huh, that. Yeah, like a, the, the, like a bridge, a back bridge. Is that what you yeah, call it? A bridge, yeah. Like, I can't do that because I'd never do it. So. <laughs> But I, there was a point in time where I did practice it and it got easier, right? Yeah. So it's all about doing it often. And I think think that's okay because, like, when I used to be really immobile, and probably by your standards, oh, yeah. I'm I'm still not that mobile. But like, I can sit into a squat without like a deep squat without warming up. It's it's the same thing. It just it just feels stiff. And I've seen big improvements, and probably the the best improvements I've seen apart from like isometrics being pretty good, but it's just been loaded mobility, just repetition. And it hasn't necessarily been like static stretching beforehand and mobility. And I've done it and it feels like, especially the active stuff feels really good, but I, I reckon it, it's been the loaded, loaded mobility, just increasing. Absolutely. I've seen, I've seen you improve actually over the years. Like I remember you couldn't squat at all. <laughs> and um, another thing is, you know, I like to train um, some weightlifting and obviously right now platforms are sparse. I don't have an access to a platform. So I haven't actually done any overhead work, overhead squats. So the other day I did get a chance to um, have a hold of an Olympic bar and try to do an overhead squat. Let me tell you, it was much harder, much harder to get into position just because I haven't done it for a long time you lose it. If you don't use it, you lose it. And when I was doing it a, a lot every day, you don't need that much more. So it's all about repetition. Yeah. I think that's, that's a really good point. We've, we've smashed this out. We've beaten last week. We're at like 18 minutes now. Oh, let's Jesus jump, Christ. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's jump into our, our listeners question. Yeah. Um, this week, our listeners question is from Monique from Gwen Waverley and Monique this probably isn't really an exercise question. We can make it an exercise question, but Monique wants to know, is it all right for people to drive past my house with isolation? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it depends on how many people are in the car, right? Yeah. And probably how local, how local they are, if they're, they're going to work or something. Maybe like from Morty Alley to Glen Waverley. That's, that's probably a bit too far out of the realm right <laughs> yeah. that might that might be a bit too far but if you can run that far or ride that far on your bike that might be a good or situation. skateboard that's all, <laughs> that's all exercise right uh, but yeah that probably might answer your question for you Monique but we'll be back uh, next week with another episode of 10 minute fitness but if you wanted to check out some more content uh, have search us up on Instagram Mine is Darcy Smith EP. And mine's underscore Lane's way. And we'll put that in the description. Thanks for listening, guys.